am I the asshole? <laughs> so for those who don't know what that is, AITA, if you search AITA on Google or Reddit, you will find a load of things to do with stories that people have said where it's usually anonymous and it's a real life situation that has happened. Well, we assume it's a real life situation. It might be made up, but we hope that it's real because we're going to comment on it as if it's a real thing. Um, and it's a scenario that someone has said, so this is something that's happened to me and this is how I've reacted to the situation. So am I the asshole in this situation or are they, whoever they are, obviously. We're going to get some people's anonymous stories up now uh, and we're going to react to them. We're going to judge people. Do you guys fancy judging people? So this is, yeah, this is... Um, one that was posted seven hours ago. New assholes, yes. <laughs> so, would I be the asshole for not attending my twin brother's surprise birthday dinner when I was only invited as a guest? Oh, okay. Interesting. By the way, we read this bit by bit. We don't we, we don't read this all in one go and then make a decision. We will read it as it is, okay? So, we will take our time. So, initial statement. The initial statement here is... He's a twin brother, and he was uh, he chose not to attend a surprise birthday dinner. He was, he was invited as a guest. So he said, I'm only a guest, so no. So he's a twin. So his brother's birthday... Oh, sorry, yeah, his brother, isn't it? We don't know if this is a female or male yet. We'll find out soon, I'm sure. Uh, so this, is a, a, this twin's brother has had their own birthday event, and they weren't invited to it because they were just a guest. Whereas in the supposedly would be a joint thing, right? Okay, straight away, I'm thinking, I'm in the middle here. I don't know if I could call this person an asshole yet, but we will, I, I, I don't think, I, we've got to get more context. We've got to get more context. We've got to dig further, guys. Okay, so I'm a twin. My brother and I hang out all the time and we are super close. In a few days, it's our 25 male's birthday. So I think this is two brothers then, I think. So, if they're super close, I am thinking that the, the other brother is an arsehole. I'm leaning more towards not an arsehole, because of course that's the ultimate decision here, is the person writing this, are they the arsehole? At the moment, the answer is no, as far as I'm concerned. You guys tell me your opinions. At the moment, I'm leaning towards they're not the arsehole, but we will find out. We will find out. We share the same friend group. I mean, even more so, I go to further into thinking they're not the arsehole. We're all really close and have been since school. He has a close group of girlfriends, about five of them, who I know also have known for many years. I would class them as being closer with him in recent years, but we are still good friends and socialize often together. Okay, so there's a little bit of, I don't know if you'd call it disharmony, but there's, he's not as close as he used to be. Okay, interesting. Now I have been added to the group labeled my brother's name surprise dinner. It is a surprise birthday dinner. Oh, okay, so yes, of course. Let's say, say it at the top as well. It's a surprise. So he's now involved as the surprise. That's a bit shitty. Yeah, I kind of... I, mm, that is, because, of course, it's his birthday as well. So that is shitty, isn't it? Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. It's a surprise birthday dinner for my twin brother organised by one of the girls in that group and they've invited me as a guest. One of them also said in the group that it would be nice to see... It would be nice to see me as well. But just like an afterthought, okay. I wouldn't have really minded if the girls wanted to organise a surprise birthday evening exclusively for my brother and themselves, but they have also invited my partner and some of my brother and I's closest friends. Uh, that is a bit shitty, I do agree. This feels inconsiderate and quite, quite upsetting, as I can't understand why I'd be invited to my literal twin brother's surprise birthday dinner with me only invited as a guest, as it is also my birthday involving all of our friends. Oh, um, my girlfriend her, also found this action to be extremely rude and wondered why this girl didn't just reach out to her and then they could have organised a surprise involving both of us instead of just involved both my brother and I and left the surprise element out of it. Yeah, this is it's so true. And and, and as, as stated before, I completely agree with that. It's not the brother's fault, list, right? So it's a, it's a surprise to the brother as well. So he's not done anything wrong here as far as we're aware so far. But yeah, it's um, yeah. You deserve to feel special on your birthday and his day too. I completely agree. Completely agree. Of course, siblings have different friends and all, but 
to be like, we're having a birthday party for your twin, and guess you could come too, is shitty. Completely agree. In the chat, it is clearly stated that we are all to arrive at one time while my brother to arrive 20 minutes later. The thought of attending makes me feel weird because it's a celebration for his birthday when him and I are literally born on the same day. This isn't new information to the organiser. Also, every year my brother and I do something together because we want to and because we have the same friends. Last year, our friends and my girlfriend set up a massive dinner for our birthday, which everyone was invited, including the girl group. So now I'm at a crossroads. I don't know whether or not to attend. On one hand, if I don't go, I'll feel left out because our mutual friends are going. But on the other hand, if I do go, I'll feel like I'm letting myself be disrespected and I will likely feel uncomfortable as it feels like only my brother is being celebrated. So would I be the asshole if I took a stand and didn't go? Here we go, there's an edit on this as well. My girlfriend has just checked the chat and the organizers spoke to dinner for 10 people and set a menu. There are currently 11 attending, excluding my girlfriend and I. If I if we went, this would make it way over capacity. Now, we are really sure if we should go, because what if we turn up and there's no room? This makes it slightly more awkward, as we may not be able to pull up a chair and join. Dinner is tomorrow also. Oh... The edit is done, 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 isn't it? Goodness. So, yeah. So, so in summary, we'll look at the comments in a minute, of course. Uh, but in summary, I, I'm in agreement with chat. Uh, the, no one... This this person's not the arsehole. The, but the brother's not the arsehole either. What would I do in this situation? I would actually call them out. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, what the hell are you doing? My... <laughs> Do you, did you forget we're twins? Did you forget it's both of our birthdays? Uh, am I not? Am I not deserving of a of a surprise birthday party of my of of you know to be included? Why is it his and not us? And if the chat becomes more like oh well you know well we're just we're just not close. It's like yeah, but we've always celebrated together, and you're really you're really being rude about the whole thing. Have you considered what he thinks? Um, because every year we do this together type of thing that's what i would do i'd just be open and honest and upfront and i know it's difficult no one likes to challenge people right but you gotta do that you gotta stand up for yourself and that's why he says you know what well, if i took a stand but you know you want to go because it's your brother's birthday right so that's my take on it so we have a look at some of the comments shall we not the arsehole i would not go do something with your brother earlier that day then treat yourself to something special with your girl later on and you might want to look into getting a new group of friends are you sure they even like you that's a, that's a fair point i mean i like that i like that analogy if you've been given the date and the time then do something with the brother at an earlier or a later time i think that's quite a good uh, alternative as well actually i quite like that idea and then treat something with your girl later yeah go out with go out for some food with your girlfriend sounds like a plan i actually quite like that and then it, it really it drives the point home doesn't it? it drives the point home because then you get to see your brother and you get to spend some time with your girlfriend and then you don't get to spend time with people that aren't considerate for your feelings right um you must clearly organize something with your brother for that evening that forces someone to tell your your bother that he can't go with, with you since they have organized a surprise party for him alone or they don't and you have a good evening with your brother yeah, tell him you can't go because you'll be celebrating your birthday NTA. Not the asshole. That is true. Not the asshole. Break the surprise to talk to your brother. I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, what would you guys think? Do you guys think that they should break the surprise? I don't know if you need to break the surprise. I, You know, sometimes that would make them the asshole in a certain way. Just be the bigger person, I think. Just let them do their own thing. And just go. No, I'm not being invited. Why? Why? Why are you not coming? Because because you, you you're not considering of my feelings. So enjoy yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'll do my own thing with my brother another time. I think that um, I don't think you should break the surprise as such. I'd be a shithead and plan something for his twin and organise it with all the family. Yeah, that sounds like an idea. Is I mean, because obviously this is just friends, isn't it? Um, maybe you could do something with the family. I think that's a fair point. But then maybe there's a reason why family's not been invited. Maybe there's there's something going on there. We don't know. But on the hypothetical that, that they got on for the family, well, yeah, plan plan a plan a family event an hour before. <laughs> I think they said one o'clock, didn't they? Something like that. Um, so do it for twelve. <laughs> <laughs> sorted not the asshole it's weirdly aggressive and rude to invite you your girlfriend and a bunch of your friends and not to, and to a not your brother oh my god i can't read 
to a not your birthday party on your actual birthday. No big deal if they'd done something with just him, but by making it a surprise, they're trying to trap you into going along. It's so weirdly aggressive, I'd break the surprise and talk to him. In fact, show him this thread. Ooh. Ooh, damn. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that statement there, to be honest with you, but um, yeah, that's, 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 that's fair enough. So, not the arsehole. There we go, not the arsehole. One was six hours ago, another fresh arsehole. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Am I the asshole for disrespecting a family recipe and calling someone entitled for policing my food? Ooh. Okay. Too long, did not read. My family hosted a dinner with some family friends and one got really upset at my meal of choice. I felt like I was justified at the time, but since my family hates conflict, I'm wondering if I may be the asshole. Background: I, a 24 female, moved out of the home, uh, moved out of home for school at 18, and have been living abroad on my own ever since, cooking my own food. Okay, so they've developed their own cooking skills for six years. Okay. I don't believe I'm a picky eater, so I do avoid certain foods, mostly meat, mayo, and vinegar. Okay. Uh, if I'm invited somewhere and I don't like the food or some of the ingredients, I will smile and eat anyways, but I avoid these foods if I can choose. My mother knows about it, so when she cooks, she will usually set aside a small portion for me to go before adding mayo and vinegar. Okay. <laughs> There's mayo. I hate mayo. I was about to say, you know what? This story here... This story here, I might be able to relate to this story. <laughs> One of the dish, one of the side dishes of yesterday's meal was a potato salad typical of my region. Yeah, uh, basically potato puree with small pieces of veggies and seafood mixed in with mayo. Yeah, mayo is a key element of the recipe, which is why I never ordered that dish. But my mother usually sets aside a portion before adding the mayo. Usually, she will set aside a big portion so that the other people feel welcome to eat the alternative, no mayo version if they want. Dinners here, f uh, dinners here are always potluck style. But this time she forgot, and I arrived to the kitchen on time to set aside a small part that had no mayo yet, no more than three or four spoons. So when we served dinner, I took the plate for myself. We have eaten with everyone invited yesterday, countless times, and I can't remember any time of any of them have ate the, ate the no mayo version. I ate the same main as everyone else. I love potato salad. So I hate potato salad. Ugh, no. Mayo just... Mayo ruins everything. <laughs> so far, I'm thinking they're not the asshole, but we might we might have different opinions on this because some people might be calling this person fussy, but I call them, you know, themselves. <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, one of the family friends noticed my plate was different. She asked me if I didn't think the potato salad was great. I agreed. Then why did my plate look different? And why hadn't I been served the same dish as the others? I told her mine had no mayo. Did I have an intolerance? No, ma'am. I just don't like mayo. But potato salad without mayo is just potato puree. <laughs> Maybe, ma'am. I enjoy potato puree. At the time, she started insisting I tried a real recipe and see how good it is. I told her I grew up with it. I knew it was good, and I had ha I was happy everyone enjoyed it. I preferred my own version. I admit I was a bit short, but I didn't see my meal choice wanted so much attention. My family hates conflict, and I was trying to steer the conversation somewhere else, but this person went on a rant about how young people are entitled and unappreciative of their traditions. I looked her dead in the eye and said I did not think I was the entitled one here. <laughs> Since I have not gone to her own home to tell her how to eat her own food. Complete silence. Oh! Damn! <laughs> oh my god. This is a common problem for large families and they always have to comment when you don't take a certain food because they made it. More for me. <laughs> if your plate choices start to drawing unwanted commentary, you are not the arsehole. People need to, mean, uh, to mind their own. I completely agree. I'm glad we're all in agreement on this. Right is 100% in the right. I completely agree. Not the arsehole. Yep. Okay, Boomer. Yeah, it's very much... Um, it's. I mean, and this is one thing I've noticed actually with a lot of, dare I say... Uh, sorry to say it, but older people, and when I say older people, I'm talking, dare I say, oh, it's dangerous territory to say it, but like people people who are like 50 plus, maybe, and again, I'm not saying that they are old, I'm just saying they are of an older generation, right? I tend to notice that because food allergies, food tolerances are on the all-time high now, and when people were growing up in, you know, in that era, era should we say, when 
it was not as often discovered or acknowledged or or whatever or people just kind of felt a bit funny but kind of got on with it you know had a bit of grit you know a bit of old-fashioned grit that you know a lot of people of that generation don't tend to respect the younger generation of people who have these to into intolerances and uh you know preferences and food allergies and all that stuff you know it's a it's a huge generational shift i've noticed uh with that and um yeah it's 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 i've noticed it with a lot of, of people there say of of that age so i'm not i'm hoping not offending anyone when i say that uh, but I mean, science has come so far, in my opinion. I think that's what it is. But it's so easy now to identify how to be intolerant to certain things uh, compared to how it ever was 20, 20 to 50 years ago, you know? Um, so it's just a whole new technology and a whole new science. Um, and and that, that generation of people didn't, unfortunately, have the luxury of being able to live in that time where, you know, a lot of people are finding allergies now, you know, um and in in that age crap bracket for the first time because they they've just gotten through it you know it's a real shame um should be wearing that potato salad <laughs> anyway so there's a little bit a little bit left here complete silence she was visibly annoyed but let my mother change the topic i believe i was on the right to tell her she was out of line but my poor grandma grandpa sorry looked dismayed at the tension and it was probably would have been easier if i'd taken a small portion of mayo and politely agreed so am i the asshole no no you are not the asshole i mean i guess you could have taken a bit and just not eaten it but i don't think she was in the wrong i mean yeah maybe i don't think she was wrong to reply that way no you know, so in terms of this story, they're not the asshole. I think the other family member is the asshole here. I just, I, I, I've, I've been in that situation so many times, so, so, and I will continue to be in that situation because, um, like, if I go to a restaurant with work colleagues or something like that, like I've always been fussy with um, what I'm eating. Like I'll order the burger. Uh, like again, so because I don't like salad, like um, I, I always order a plain burger. Uh, so sometimes you'll go for a place and you go for a burger and you'll have relish and you'll have sides and salad and shit like that. I only just order a burger and chips and that's it. So I'm saying, can I have a burger please without the salad? Do you want something really good? No, thank you. I am really, really plain. And yet you get people going, oh, you don't want, you don't want salad. What's wrong with you? I'm like, well, I just don't fucking want salad. <laughs> Is it a crime? And on that note, well, another thing that grinds my gears, can I? You know what really grinds my gears? I just say, it really grinds my gears. But by, by the way, and I, I don't know if this is a UK thing or if this is a, a another thing, like a Western world thing or, or or even a worldwide thing. But can I just say, I hate the fact that in a lot of places, the default burger settings, right, is with all the trimmings, shall I say? You know, all the salad and relish or ketchup or whatever it is right you have to unpick the stuff off the menu you have to you don't add shit to do it you don't you have to take it off like the default setting is i want a burger with all of everything and i'm like why like for me it does my nutting because sometimes i will order a burger and i'll forget that that's the default and then i'll get the burger ordered and it comes to me either if we're in a restaurant and it comes to my my, my table or if i'm ordering it takeout and it gets delivered to my door and i'm like oh shit i've ordered a burger and it's got all sorts of fucking crap in it um whereas why don't you add stuff to it because everyone's different some people might go i don't want lettuce some people might go i don't want tomatoes some people might go you know what i want the lettuce and tomatoes and whatever but i don't want any sauce why is the default setting everything i also think it's really bad for food waste the environmentalist in me hates it because I'm like, you, you, you know, it's wasting food. You can save lettuce and whatever by not putting it on, you know? I don't know. I'm ranting. It's turning into a Johnny Rant stream. It certainly did. I'm so sorry, guys. I went on one then. Um, that would be like someone telling me, oh, I don't like mushrooms and me inviting them for tea and making mushroom soup. That is a good point. Let's do another one. These are fun. Why don't I do this more often? Am I the asshole for not eating my girlfriend's vanilla almond milk mac and cheese? <laughs> okay. I mean, this is a really short one. There's no, there's no additional context here. This is the entirety of the thread. Of the thread. I can't even say it. 
Last night she made me craft mac and cheese but used sweetened vanilla almond milk instead of regular milk and sprinkled not fresh bacon crumbs crum, crumbles on top. I didn't say a word but took a bite or two and sneakily disposed of it after she ate hers without being rude. She didn't even notice I didn't eat it. She found it in the trash and she's calling me picky right now and saying it's frustrating I didn't eat it. That's absolutely disgusting, right? I mean, this is really short. Um. Uh, okay. She used sweetened vanilla almond milk instead of regular milk. So this isn't just... I mean, what, 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 the question for me would be why did she do that? Like... Like, if it was non-sweetened vanilla almond milk used instead of regular milk, that's like a, a vegan thing, right? Am I right in saying that? I'm a bit I'm a bit ignorant to this, to this, by the way, so I apologise. But am I right in saying that? Um, vanilla almond milk is a vegan alternative to regular milk, right? But sweetened vanilla almond milk is a whole different thing. Am I right? Why did she use... Oh, yeah, vanilla. Good point. Yeah, exactly. Van Why vanilla? Why would you put that's a very good point. Why would you put vanilla in it as well? It's a very it's a very weird alternative to regular milk. Just the phrase vanilla almond mac and cheese makes my stomach heave. <laughs> Why did she use vanilla? I would guess that it was the only milk and she probably started making it and needed a milk. That might be a good point. That doesn't I mean this has got such a lack of context around it. It's hard to make uh, a good amount of um, opinion on it, but that's a very good point. What if she was like, "Oh shit, we've got no milk. Ugh, the shop is closed. Maybe it's like 11 p.m. Uh, and the only milk we've got is is uh, it's sweet it's sweetened al uh, vanilla almond milk. It will do. It will be fine. Uh, I, that's a fair point. Uh, that could be that could be uh, an alternative here, but we don't know." Um, and it's not fresh bacon crumble. I mean, why is it not fresh? There's such a lack of context here. Why is it not fresh? I mean, is that the only bacon they had? Is it leftover? Is it leftover bacon? That would be pretty uh, disgusting. Um, but if it's what what does not fresh mean? <laughs> I don't know. Is it four days old and you might die? <laughs> no, no, obviously, maybe that's a bit dramatic. You might have to have to shits for a few days. You know. Oh my god. Not fresh is bullshit. He didn't need to add that. You know what? I think that you might be right. It kind of comes across as a bit of a... You're trying to add add context. As in, sorry, not add context. You're, supposed to, you're kind of adding stuff to make it less, you know, like you're the arsehole. But it's actually kind of coming across as a bit... Almost a bit entitled, really. I don't know. Uh, so I kind of agree, yeah. Beg your pardon for not making a whole rack of bacon for this little bit to sprinkle on your mac and cheese, my lord. <laughs> you can get bacon bits as a thing. They're like dried bacon sprinkles. That is true. You can. I'm kind of thinking he's the asshole, But she hasn't really used her noggin, possibly. But it's hard to say because it's so short. I'm kind of thinking he's the asshole. Let's have a look at the comments for this. But this is so short. This is hard. Here we go. Not the arsehole, but always put something on top when you're hiding it in the trash. <laughs> Ideally, bottom layer of napkins and paper towels. The hidden thing on the top layer, it lay it from the dustbin or vacuum bag. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Oh yeah, <laughs> cover her up. He does sound entitled. I do agree. Frankly, they're both assholes in that story. We do need more backstory. We do need more backstory. It's hard to kind of talk about it without the backstory. She probably honestly just assumed the milk would be fine and it clearly wasn't. I mean, she might have been experimenting. Yeah. On here. Not the asshole. You're right. Vanilla almond milk and mac and cheese is absolutely disgusting. She needs to buy an unflavored plant-based milk if she wants to cook savory meals with them. I won't say they have been labeled unsweetened because some original flavors have sweetener in them, but only enough to make them sweet as dairy milk, not sweeter. That said, you have to be careful because some original flavors... Oh, just shut up above. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try a different comment. That comment was rubbish. Not the asshole. You were polite. Were you? I don't know. 
Even if it was true that you're picky, so what? Our partner's not the same as us, and we can either live and accept that or move on. The idea that you should have powered through food you don't like for her is wrong, and mac and cheese sounds like a crime against humanity. <laughs> uh, I kind of agree with that to a point. Right, let's move on. Um, so that, I, I kind of think they're kind of the asshole in that, but I don't know. Am I the asshole for parroting the things my wife says to me back at her? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know, depends. So it's my 11 year anniversary tonight. Not sure if that has any bearing on this story, but I think it's important to bring up. We had a party at our place for some friends and neighbours and towards the end of the party I was visibly intoxicated but decided to have another beer because that's what I that's just what I do on a Friday night. Upon seeing me retrieve this beer, my wife says, Ugh, I never want fucking really, sounding all bent out of shape. This doesn't really bother me because I've been married to this super fly lady for eleven years now. Oh, that's a cute thing to call your wife. Uh well, sorry, um, yeah, married, yeah, yeah, wife. About four minutes later, I see her getting a Rice Krispie treat, so I jokingly say, Ugh, another one? <laughs> Completely free of profanities or anything trying to show I'm just messing about because that's just my person. I'm now in the doghouse and she's pissed because I was making fun of her weight. Oh, shit. Oh, that took a turn. And that getting a dessert is different than sobriety. And I tried to explain that I wasn't making fun of anyone's weight, just parroting someone getting plus one of something, but it's fallen upon deaf ears and I've been, I've been arsehole branded in our house. It should be noted that I'm not struggling with sobriety or any such issues. I just hear and see things that make me laugh and I want to keep it going. Am I the asshole for parroting my wife? Oh, he's the asshole, really? Why is he the asshole? Oh shit, are we disagreeing on this? He wasn't making fun of her weight. Well, he says he. I mean, obviously, this is contact. This is context, right? If he is being genuine, that's that's just a mis. That's just a bit of a miscommunication. One crispy treat isn't the same as having another beer when you're already drunk. Yeah, yeah, I kind of see what he's saying, but he wasn't saying it was making fun of her weight, though. He was. He was just parroting. That's what he's saying, right? He was saying he was parroting, so he's just repeating what she said. So she said. Another one, really. So he then said, another one, really, because she just said that to him. Um, he did that as a joke and parroting is funny. Maybe he should have thought about it, though. It's, yes, it's, it's, I think, yeah. I mean, the thing is, he's saying that he's not struggling with sobriety, but then is he in denial? That's a good point, isn't it? He could be in denial. Um, because if she's saying another one fucking really does he want two things going on either he has a lot of drink or B uh, she just, just does not like him drinking you know one of those two things I'd say to that situation right but then he then said oh, another one for her having a rice krispie treat and she's then taken that and gone you're making fun of my way and he's gone no I'm not I was just saying what you said to me but back at you and she's now saying, no, that's it. You're an asshole. Yeah, they need to communicate for sure. I'm sure get, I'm sure they're getting drunk on the weekends is a sensitive thing. They'd get old for me pretty fast. It sounds like, yeah, because that's, he did say, didn't he? He said, um, that's just what I do on a Friday night. There seems to be an element here of denial from him in terms of the fact that he maybe has a bit of an alcohol problem. Maybe. We don't know. There's not enough context here, is there? But... <clears throat> but it seems like yeah and, and it would be the type of thing you'd say when you're drunk as well oh another one really <laughs> you know it's, it, he's just she said that about me I mean he said he wasn't bothered so he was like Woof, she just said that about me okay and then she didn't get to rush to speak and she's gone oh I, I, another one you know um, so um I think he's innocent, but maybe has an alcoholic problem, potentially. And she seems to be a bit sensitive. I, that's the way I'd like to describe it. Um, I mean, you know, because you can you can interpret things that way. I mean, you know, it's, it's communication in a relationship. You know, that's what that's what that's what married people or people in relationships do. They they have to trust their partners. So there's a lack of trust here. I'd like to think. 
uh, or not like to think um because he said i wasn't making fun of you away and she's gone well yeah you did and it's like well mm, you know i don't know you know what i mean maybe neither one of them are assholes just a married couple that needs to have a discussion about uh, when both level headed i agree completely agree that just happens when you're with someone for a long time you need to talk maybe not to the inter the internet for validation i thought she meant crispy treats <laughs> Those are bomb. Crispy treats. I don't know what crispy. I know what rice. Uh, I, I we got we got a thing here in the UK. Uh, we have rice krispies. Uh, I'm sure you have rice krispies in the US, don't you? But we have the Kellogg's rice krispy. They do rice krispy squares, and they're fucking banging. They're so good. It's basically rice krispies but with marshmallow infused inside, and it's just banging. Hey, let's have a look at some of the comments on this. Um, you are the asshole. You were parroting her specifically for the purpose of being an arsehole. You knew it was annoying and not remotely constructive. You ju you say you just want to keep doing things that make you laugh, so you enjoy being annoying and you don't care for about others making you the arsehole. You're extremely lucky your wife has put up with you for so long. Grow up and apologize. Also, commenting on someone else's eating is absolutely different from commenting on someone's dead drinking. Wow, yeah. Bam. That person is apparently the arsehole. Um, according to this... I mean, I think that's an interesting point. It's not the same as it. Um, someone eating is not the same as someone drinking. It's not the same. It isn't the same. But again, when again, I know I'm possibly partially defending the guy a bit here. I'm sorry. Uh, but if you're drunk, you're not going to use <laughs> common sense. <laughs> Let's be honest. Publicly shame. Yeah, it is very much that, isn't it? There's a bit of public shaming here, isn't there? What do you guys think in chat? What do you guys think? Who is this? Because obviously we're talking about the person writing here. So it's the person writing, the, the man, I'm assuming. Um, is he the asshole? Yes or no? I'm, uh... I, I, I think if I have to choose a side here, I, I think I think he is the asshole. Um, I just feel like he is in denial about his drinking problem. You're not considering the other person's feelings. You're just going, well, I'm annoying for the sake of it. And that's the thing, right? He's not taking into account her feelings. That's very obvious. Whereas in, I think I would in that situation. So, um, she shouldn't have made the comment in the first place. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's the context that we don't know about it. Like, how, how much is he drinking? You know, we don't know, do we? Okay, ESH means everyone sucks here. Okay, everyone sucks here. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I think so. Uh, you're both adults, you can eat and drink whatever and however you like. No reason for either of you to bitch about each other and having a drink or a dessert on a fun occasion. Obviously in moderation. I'm in no way saying that overindulging is good for you. Yeah. Kind of agree. Yeah, pretty much. Communicate. That's always the thing about these things. Every single time we do... Uh, I look at these uh, mighty asshole scenarios. I'm always like, you need to communicate, man. If you don't communicate, it's never going to work out. Mighty asshole for threatening to file a restraining order against my parents. Oh, my 22 male parents are nut jobs. I have two siblings, Diana, 19 female, and Luke. 8 male. My parents are 50 male and 45 female. My parents heavily favoured my brother and I over our sister. Luke and I were showered with pocket money, gifts, etc. whilst Diana was expecting to get a job as soon as it was legal for her to do so. They claimed they wanted to raise her to be strong and independent, but both of them have said they wish they had three sons because girls, are jo jo girls join their husband's family and leave their parents behind, so having them isn't worthwhile. Oh my god, okay. Well, that's a bit Calm down, King Henry VIII, you know? Um, my mother's pregnancy with Diana was also very difficult and the damage that its cause meant she had many miscarriages whilst trying to have Luke, all which were blamed on Diana. Yes, I did stand up for Diana as much as I could until I moved out of college at 17. I tried to get the other family members involved, but my parents were are amazing at pretending they're not evil. <laughs> God, okay. The tone of this. So let's just look at the context-wise for age. So he's 22 and Diana's 19. So there's a three-year gap. Okay. As soon as Diana turned 18 on July, she moved out. Like on the evening of her 18th birthday, I was receiving calls from her parents asking me if I knew where she was because she had disappeared. She had moved in with her friend, Savannah's family, and a few months later she started dating Savannah's older brother, Michael, 25 male. So she's six years younger. Okay. 
and she moved in with him in January 2022. Savannah's family adored my sister and they were happy that she was dating their son. And I knew, knew nothing was going on before Diana was 18 because Michael lived abroad until September 2021. Okay, I was thinking that in the back of my head. A mathematical nonce. Is that what it's called? Is that what it's called? <laughs> I think it's something like that. <laughs> So this is a so this is a potential mathematical non story. Okay, a mathematical pedo. Same thing. Okay, um, okay. So let's get the context here because obviously now I've been kind of glazing over the dates, but now it's important. <laughs> okay, rewind. So this was written today, right? Let me just go back to the top. This was written today, today, ten hours ago. So this is really fresh. Okay, so Diana's 19. In t July 2021, she turned 18. And then she dated Michael in November. So she was 18 when she was with him. There was like five months between those two dates, right? So that's fine. Michael was living abroad until September. Yeah, so he's not. So there we go. I had to kind of, I kind of have to do a bit of time stamping there, but no, he's not. If this is all true, of course, we're only getting one certain side of the story here, but if this, this, the dates are accurate, he's not a mathematical pedo. There we go. Okay. Let's continue. <laughs> My parents disowned Diana in August 2021. Okay, so that's two months late. No, that's one month later. When it became clear she wasn't moving back in with them and they haven't asked me about her either. Now that Eva... Now they're constantly harassing me to get them back into contact with her because they found out she gave birth to her daughter at the beginning of this month. Right, so that's this month. By the way, contextually, uh, obviously, um, I am recording this. So this month is um, is April 2023, just so we know. Um, so uh, I didn't speak to them much after Diana moved out because they make me sick but I still wanted to keep in touch with Luke but the harassment has gotten relentless. They are demanding that I get Diana to speak to them because they have a right to know their granddaughter. They showed up to my job and home which scared me as I live with my boyfriend and my family don't know I'm into men. <sighs> I know if I, I don't know if they're homophobic, but the behavior scares me nonetheless. That prompted me to look into restraining orders, and I think it'd be possible to get one against them. Yesterday, they showed up to my home again, and I answered the door and told them very plainly that they weren't owed access to Diana's child, and I was going to get a restraining order against them if they didn't stop harassing me. My grandmother called me. Uh, that evening to tell me how heartless I was being because I was denying them access to two thirds of their children, myself and Diana. She said that threatening to sever family relationships wasn't the way and I was being a horrible person for not allowing them the option to reconcile with Diana. My grandmother was a very sensible person so I'm now starting to feel like I've gone too far, am I the asshole? Oh, damn, okay. I mean, no. That's my take, basically. You're not the asshole. Um, it, I, there's a lot of context here. It's very well written out, very detailed in terms of dates. And, you know, I know we're only getting one side of the story here, but from this person's perspective, I completely understand why they've been trying to protect their sister. And um, there's a lot of history here. Um, in terms of the fact that the parents didn't like the daughter because um, they weren't male and they, you know, and it's it's funny all of a sudden that Diana has now got her own child that all of a sudden um, the the parents are interested because again it's 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 just ridiculous, isn't it? I don't think I don't think this guy's the asshole at all i feel like the parents are definitely the asshole in the situation one thing we don't know because we haven't got diana's side of the story really here is does diana want to reconcile with her parents i suspect the answer is no based on what's been written here but the only thing i'd say here that we don't really know a lot of context around is he should let diana know mum and dad have been on They've been wanting to speak to you. They want to see you. They say they miss you. I'm assuming these are the things that they have said, right? 
We don't know for sure, but I'm assuming those are the things that the parents would have said. Get Diana to call us. We miss her, right? Get Diana to call us. We want to meet our grandchild, you know? Like, if Diana then says, oh, I want to see them, then that's up to her, right? Like, Diana's a grown person. Diana can make Diana's decisions, right? I would assume, I don't know, but I would assume that Diana knows all this information and has gone, no, I don't want anything to do with my parents. They were horrible to me uh, as a kid. I don't want anything to do with them. As soon as I was 18, I wanted, couldn't, can't wait, couldn't wait to get out of there. I've now gone to this other family. They've been amazing with me. I feel like I've settled in very well. I've met this guy. We've got a kid now, you know, and she's just trying to grow her life. She's just trying to build her own life away from her parents who seem very very toxic that's kind of my take on this so therefore the brother the person writing this isn't the asshole what are we thinking let's have a look at some of the comments let's have a look at some of the comments not the asshole your parents are horrible and you're protecting your sister and niece you they have no rights here and again that's one thing i'd like to make very clear like that is gaslighting that is fucking gaslighting um, is the parents saying we ha we have a right to meet our granddaughter? No, you don't. No grandparent has a right to meet their grandchild. They don't. Not by law. Um, and um, you know, like I'm not going to go into it, but my dad has met my kids. My dad was a very horrible, abusive man. He was. N you'll never see those kids. Never. Um, he has no right to see them. In fact, with that totally, they aren't owed anything, no. If, as far as I'm concerned, um, they, they, they should earn the right, really, by being good parents. <laughs> you know? Um, but hey, you know, I've got three kids. Hopefully I'll beat my grandchildren, if, if any of my kids obviously choose to have kids, which they may not, and I'm all powerful if they choose not to. That's another thing, isn't it? I can't stand... And again, I feel like this is a generational thing as well, but I can't stand people who say stuff like, oh, so when are you going to have kids? Oh, does my nut in, especially to women, especially to women, it does my nut in. Like, no one, especially women, should be having people put pressure on them to have kids. Fuck off. It is a woman or, 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 or a person, but obviously in terms of giving birth, it is a person's um, decision to have children, right? It does my nut in. Oh, you'll change your mind one day. Fuck off. <laughs> Why? Like, you know, there's, there's what, 8 billion people on this planet? We don't, we're not living in a, pl in a time now where people have to have kids. You know, we never, we weren't for a long time anyway in the past, but you know, I can understand it, you know, in the past, but now, no, it's, it's nice to live in a time where people can actually live their own lives, you know, um, I don't know. Anyway, that was a different, uh, that was a different one. Um, so yeah, no, not the asshole, not the asshole. Am I the asshole for saying that if I have to wear a bra at home, so does my dad and brother? <laughs> Captions brilliant. For starters, I, female 23, have the smallest chest in the family. My brother, male 26, and father, male 57, are both both on the uh, are both a bit on the heavier side. But I've never used that against them before, and it's never been a big issue. Last week, my parents and brother came over for a surprise visit, and I happened to forego wearing a bra, since it was just me at home, loafing in my room and reading stuff. They wanted to stay a while and chat slash have tea in the apartment, so I didn't really see a reason to put on a bra still. Fast forward a while, and I noticed my mum was giving me a look. I wasn't wearing anything particularly see-through or thin, it was just a regular graphic tee of my favourite hot sauce and some shorts. My mum told me to go change, since it was inappropriate for me, to be wearing so little with men in the house. I told her politely at first that I didn't think it was anything weird and I, sh I used to wear these exact clothes at our house all the time not that long ago and she never had any and she never said anything. But then she started going off on a tangent about how I wasn't little anymore and I couldn't get away with having having them just swinging around. We <laughs> we argued a bit about it because I can't I really can't be bothered to put on a bra during the weekend when I have no plans or going anywhere, but she kept insisting that I was being a terrible host and exposing myself. My dad and brother were also on her side, brother more reluctantly, and just told me to do what she wants as it wasn't a big deal. 
I don't know why, but I just felt so done and stressed out uh, to, at this point. And I, oh my god, there's loads here. Um, that I snapped, if I have to wear a bra in my own house because of my chest, and so do dad and bro. I could tell right away that my comment made my dad feel hurt, and I did feel immensely guilty afterwards, but I still don't think I should have had to put a bra for a surprise visit when they were going to leave soon anyways. My brother tells me that I took it too far, and I should have either ignored her or changed that change for that little while whilst they were visiting. My mum also refuses to talk to me until I apologise for my inappropriate comment. Am I the arsehole? Okay. Um, uh, we got to read the edit. I was going to try and make an opinion there, but no, we got to read the edit. It's too it's, the the bold text is glaring at me. Edit. After reading all through the comments and the boy and boy, there are a lot more than I thought they'd be. I'd just like to clarify a few things. When I said my brother and dad were backing up my mom. My dad was very vocally backing her up and enforcing this needs to wear a bra behaviour. He and my mom are just afraid that if I'm not wearing a bra when they're around, I probably won't go won't for other guests and that makes me immodest. My brother decided with them because he already gets on my mom's nerves enough for other reasons so he didn't want to draw any fire. My mom is the type of person who even wears bras to sleep, so to her wearing one isn't a big deal and she often says that not wearing one will lead to a saggy chest in the future. Her comment wasn't really meant to be a jab at the men's inability to keep it in their pants it's really just her own thoughts on the matter that said thank you for some of the comments calls for calling me out i will definitely apologize to my brother and maybe my dad since it was necessary to my mom's level edit number two i'm not sure if i wasn't clear in the post but i live alone in an apartment away from my parents and brother it was a recent change though okay i checked our child to school for some days without a bra and that's fucking awful things i was just about to say oh my god i can i just say there's so many generational situations in these are my assholes today. I feel like this is a generational thing again. I know a lot of people my age and younger, I'm going to say younger, I mean in their 20s, that don't wear bras because they're uncomfortable. And I, I personally salute those people slash women, you know, um, because I, uh, I, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I... I don't know how you do it. Like genuinely, I salute women uh, and, and and people who wear bras because they look so uncomfortable. They really do, especially the old wired ones, right? Um, I know I know padded bras are becoming more popular now. I know softer bras are becoming more popular, but it's another layer that you know women and women facing people uh, have to put up with, and it for for, for what for for societal pressure. If you're in the comfort of your own home, you should be in the comfort of your own home. There are so many guys who live alone and do their own thing. They will probably go up and down that house uh, and into any any room of the house in their underwear because it's their own home. I bet you that. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. No one will be calling them out on it. So, why should a woman or a female um, presenting person feel like they have to wear a bra constantly? You know, if you've got guests. Again, I think it's about comfort. And again, if you're in comfort of your own home and you got a surprise visit from your family, I don't think there's an issue, especially when we've, we've got the context here in terms of the fact that apparently this is a relatively flat-chested person. Um, she wasn't showing anything. She wearing some shorts and a T-shirt, which didn't... There was no. It's not cold, should we say. Absolutely, perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Am I right? I don't know. <laughs> not the arsehole. Damn right, I'm not wearing a bra if I'm hanging out at home. Damn right. To sleep on my Christ, I know. <laughs> this, this poor woman. She, she, she goes to, she, she has a shower in it with a bra on. <laughs> uh, she, when, when, she, when she passes away, keep me, with, it's going to be in the world, make sure I've got a bra on. <laughs> not just that. Sometimes when the bra wire is breaking, it will pop out. I, I, I. Yeah, it stabbers in the throat. Christ. Wired bras, my god. They seem awful. Always thought wired bras are fucking awful <laughs> things. Absolutely awful things. I'm so happy they're starting to, to die out now. They're not, they're, I mean, I'm sure that you still get them, can't you? But, ugh. Oh, I can't imagine anything worse than a wired bra. It sounds awful. I don't do wires, no. Yeah, she showed up at my house. She can't tell me what to wear. Showers and bras and socks, yeah. <laughs> no, this person is not the arsehole. Not the arsehole, definitely not. 
Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there we go. Not the asshole, you can't give me rules on my body in my house. Damn right. Also, really creeped out by the whole idea of a woman having to cover up their bodies for men in the family. Edit, fat shaming your dad and brother makes you a little bit of the asshole. I mean, yeah. I mean, again, contextually here, like, again, if she was getting pushed and pushed and pushed, she, 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 she said she went, she had the family over, and then she went somewhere else in the house, and then her mum came up to her and was like, you need to put a bra on. You need to, uh, what are you doing? And she went, no, no. And then went and continued on. And then all three of them are kind of pecking at her. Or two of the three, because the brother apparently was only doing it as a bit of a year type of thing. Um, pecking at her. Then when you get more pent up and more pent up and more pent up, and you're trying to go, no, I'm not going to. Please respect my boundaries. I say no, this is my house. And they're still pecking at you. Then... Then what are you going to say? You're going to come out with something like that. You're going to say, well, if I can need to, you two do as well. You know, it gets to that point. I completely sympathise and, and and I've been in that. I've been in that situation. I'm quite a calm person. If I'm pushed, I will I will blow up. I I, I tend to go from zero to a hundred. <laughs> I've got I've got no filter. Uh, I've got no in between. I I'm usually very very calm as a person, but I I I didn't used to be like when I was in my teenage years. I was I was quite an aggressive. Um, quite um quite an angry inside person. I didn't mean to be, but it was just how I. I, I was, and I, you know, obviously, I, I look back quite, quite um, disappointed with myself in that respect. But you know, it's all growing up and part of part of the journey, isn't it, of life? Um, but but the last like you know, uh, ten years or so, fifteen years to a point maybe, um, I'm a lot more well-rounded as a person. I'm really calm. But if someone does push me, I I will fucking go. <laughs> I get so I get I get how that person probably reacted to this like well f fuck off <laughs> blah you know I get it so a little bit of asshole maybe but again if someone is pushing you and pushing you then you can only go so far right am I the asshole for calling my bil what a bil a joke of a father brother-in-law brother-in-law there we go am I the asshole for calling my brother-in-law a joke of a father in front of his wife and kids oof. My sister Rachel was married to Daniel, 40, male, for eight years. They were high school sweethearts and they tied knots shortly after their graduation. They had a daughter together, Alice, who's 16, who was Rachel's entire world. Rachel ended up being diagnosed with cancer when she was a few weeks away from delivery and after Alice was born, she started chemo ASAP. It ended up being treatment resistant and aggressive and Rachel ended up passing by the time Alice was two. That is very, very sad. Uh, let's just put that there. Daniel emotionally checked out completely. He decided to take a, a job opportunity abroad and he left Alice in mine and my wife's custody. Oh, shit. Um, at first he said it was temporary and he just needed to get things in order before Alice came to live with him, but eventually it was obvious that it would be much longer. He signed his rights over to us and we've been raising her alongside our three sons. As far as the boys are concerned, Alice is their big sister and as far as Alice is concerned, they're her little brothers. Immediately saying... By the way, that this person's not the arsehole, can I just say. But we must continue. Um, Daniel got remarried and he has had two daughters. Alice was invited to the wedding. We only found out about it after his brother mentioned it to us. Daniel does send money for her and they write letters back and forth like he and Rachel used to do in school. I know that he has... I know there has to be some part of him that loves his daughter, but it's hard to believe it considering how he practically abandoned her after Rachel died. Daniel's brother Wes has helped out a bit with Alice too. She'll go over to his house at least once a month to see him, his wife and their kids. A few days ago, I was taking Alice over. When we got there, we saw Daniel and his wife and kids were there. I was ready to get back in the car and take Alice home, but Daniel saw us and came outside. He came up to Alice and tried to hug her, but she stepped back from him. He looked hurt, and when he asked why she didn't want to give her dad a hug, I snapped. I asked how could he seriously stand and refer himself as her dad when all he's ever been to her is a pen pal. I called him a joke of a father and a sorry excuse of a man. His wife and their daughters overheard what I said and when Alice and I got back home, Wes called me and I left a message saying that he agrees that Daniel hasn't been the best father to Alice, but I didn't need to tell him that in front of his wife and their kids. Daniel feels the same way. I did apologise to Alice for disparaging her father, but she just shrugged it and said it would only have been disparaging if it wasn't true. Uh, my wife said she probably wouldn't would have done worse if she'd been there, but part of me does feel like I could have said it 
I could have said it out of earshot of his children. Okay. It kind of echoes what we've just said about the last one, which is if you get to a certain point and you blow, you know, um, do I think that this person who wrote this is the asshole? No. As in, do I think they are? Okay. Do I think they are an asshole? The answer is no. They're not an asshole. Could they have dealt with that situation better? Probably. They probably could have dealt with that situation better. Um, because it was kind of uh, one of those penting things up, isn't it? You know, um, you know, dad tries to hug daughter, daughter pushes away. And dad goes, why, why, why don't you want to hug your dad? And then she's like, well, what sort of dad are you? You've not been anything other than a, paper, a, a pen pal. You know, um, you're a sorry excuse of a father. What's the wording? Uh, yeah, sorry excuse. Of, you're a joke of a father and a sorry excuse of a man. Um, I think one thing that's important here to mention that I don't think we really get to talk about here is I'd imagine... I'd imagine that Daniel is dealing with a lot of grief or has been through a lot of his life dealing with a lot of grief from his ex-wife passing away of cancer you know how he dealt with that grief hasn't clearly been the best way right um it's quite clear like if you have a wife and uh, i think it's a wife isn't it um and i have a daughter and then the wife dies away of cancer then what you should do in that situation is 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 you you the, the first your first thoughts really should be to your daughter that's my take whereas and i think daniel in his grief has kind of gone inward into himself i would suspect there was probably a conversation in there where it was well do you want to take take alice uh, while you deal with your shit and he's gone yeah yeah okay and then you know, weeks turned out to be months, months turned out to be years, and all that stuff. I'd imagine that's kind of how it's gone down. I might be wrong, but um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think he's dealt. In, in the end, he hasn't dealt with his grief very well. His his idea of dealing with grief is: I need to get out of here. I need to get out of the situation. I need to build a new life somewhere else. And then he met his new wife and had kids with that new wife. Uh, so that's um, that's not the, that's not the best way to deal with it um at all but then you know what was done was done uh and he he has made contact with his daughter he has continued to write letters he has continued to provide her support with money and has tried to see her and then she pushed away when he wanted to go in for a hug um i mean that scenario is just sad it's just sad you know the whole thing i feel very sorry for alice in this situation she must be very conflicted really about her feelings and what she should be going through and what she should be thinking because she knows she's got this and, and everything's very transparent it seems like Alice knows who her real dad is and Alice knows that her, the family that she's been with is, is an adopted family and stuff like that but you know Alice does still have her dad around as in you know to a point also the, the brother-in-law so is it Wes yeah Daniel's brother Wes, so she's got like a, an uncle, Uncle Wes. I'm assuming this is, isn't it? Uh, is also there, and he sees he sees Alice once a month. I think they I read, didn't I? Um, that's nice, you know. So what's important, really, if I'm being honest with you, in this whole thing, I'm just thinking about Alice. The whole thing is 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 thinking about Alice, really, this poor girl, young girl, lost her mum at the age of two. Her father didn't bother with her really for a long time. Um, but yeah, um, in terms of this person being the arsehole, no, I don't think they are the arsehole, but I, I feel like they haven't dealt with that situation well. It's a blow-up moment again, isn't it? They could have dealt with it better, but they chose to, um, well, they didn't choose to, they just blew up, didn't they? they just like, ah, oh, what sort of father are you? You know, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, I get it, I get it. I think he was going through grief, the daughter reminded him of his wife, so he was upset with with that I wanted to move on but I think he still shouldn't have abandoned his daughter that daughter will always have a distant relationship with her father and may question why she might not have been good enough exactly um, let's have a look at some comments I'd say your heroic behaviour in stepping up as a father figure for 14 years makes up for one slight arsehole moment and the only reason it was an arsehole moment is because it was in front of his kids not the arsehole they'll understand when they're older spot on I completely agree with that 
completely agree with that. Not the arsehole. Sounds like it was something he needed to hear, to be honest. The only way I'd have a problem with this would be if Alice was embarrassed and she wasn't. That's a very good point. As I said, it goes back to what I was saying about you should be thinking about Alice in this situation. No matter what, you need to be thinking about that poor girl. Uh, and yeah, she was asked and she was like, well, if it wouldn't it wouldn't have been thingy if it wasn't true. It's what Alice responded with. Honestly, he probably needs to hear that Rachel would be absolutely devastated to see what he did to their family, but maybe that's a thought for him the next time. Sending letters and money isn't good enough. No, I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree it was never enough, but then, um, you know, um, what now? Is the, you know, the damage was done, shall we say, or the, the decisions of past were made, but how do you... How do you make up for it now? You know, it's difficult because maybe Alice doesn't want anything to do with him. You know, it's, it, as said, no matter what, it's got to be on her terms. That's the way I see it. It's not anyone's terms but Alice's, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. Oh, she's so sad. This is just a sad story, this. Um, not the asshole. His wife knows what he was doing. Being just a pen pal to his daughter, the two daughters will eventually get older and form their own opinions. Hell, even his daughter Alice said it was true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shall we do another one? Might. This might be the last one. I don't know. Am I the arsehole for not wanting to split our, vo uh, our vacation costs evenly with my friend after she invited her boyfriend without asking me? My friend, 27 female and I, 29 female, planned a vacation together to a tropical destination. We booked a two-bedroom villa and agreed to split the costs 50-50. Everything was going great until a week before the trip when she told me she had invited her boyfriend, 28 male, to join us without asking me first. I was annoyed that she didn't discuss it with me before inviting him. However, she argued that she should be able to bring her boyfriend along since we're both adults and it wouldn't affect my vacation experience. In fact, she insisted that he would be sharing her bedroom so there wouldn't be any extra costs for accommodation. Despite my reservations, I decided to go along with it, but then I suggested that we should split the costs three ways instead of 50-50, as there would now be three of us on the trip. She disagreed, stating that she should share a bedroom and not, co not causing any extra expenses, and 50-50 was still, split was still fair. I think it's unfair for me to pay half the costs when there will be three of us on the trip. However, she argues that her boyfriend's presence will increase the costs, and I'm trying to make her pay more than her fair share. Okay, so they, let me read this again. So they booked a two bedroom villa. So it's the villa that they've paid for, right? So this isn't like food, this isn't anything else. This is just the villa. So if it's a villa and it's a two bedroom villa and she has one room and the friend has the other room, I kind of think it should be 50-50. I kind of see the friend's perspective on this. You know? I had a similar scenario with this, actually. Uh, I don't mind sharing this story. But when I... I, 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 I live in North Wales. Um, but And my ex-wife and I, when we, when we, when we first got together, uh, we were living in North Wales. Uh, and then we moved to Portsmouth together. Um, and we moved into a flat slash house with her friend and it was a two bedroom house and we had agreed in advance that I that we would pay two thirds of the rent um, because there was three of us living in the house so it was agreed in advance that that would be the case however she lived in Portsmouth we lived in North Wales and she got the lease on it's not the lease but you know she got the rent uh, sorted on the house and she moved in like I think it was a couple of weeks before we did uh, because we obviously had to move from North Wales to Portsmouth um, and she moved into one of the bedrooms and then me and my at that, at that point my girlfriend moved into one of the other the other room right there's two rooms and a few weeks later and it was a few weeks later like we uh like her, her our, our friend her friend uh, like opened her bedroom door and we saw into her bedroom because obviously we're quite pro we respect her privacy so i didn't go into her bedroom right and neither did my, my 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 girlfriend at the time um but we when the door was opened and we looked in because we could um we realized that she chose the bigger bedroom and we were pissed 
me and my ex-wife, me and my girlfriend at the time, we were really pissed off because, whoa, 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 you knew that there was going to be two of us in one of the bedrooms and we're paying two thirds of the rent and you are paying a third of the rent for the biggest bedroom. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> That is absolute bullshit. Um, yeah. So anyway, my point being that we had agreed to that in advance. Um, but I can see the point that the friend is making here. That the boyfriend isn't actually adding any costs. What costs is there? It's two bedrooms. If you book a hotel now for you and your friend you book and you book in two rooms you're basically paying for one of the rooms and then your mate is going into the other room and then they've gone oh my boyfriend's coming into my other room now why would you then split it in, into thirds keep it 50 50 because it's again it doesn't make any di i'm kind of with the friend on here i don't think she's an asshole but i just think that i can understand the friend's perspective on this am i wrong let's have a look let's have a look at what people say not the arsehole, and her inviting her boyfriend without telling you. Yeah, okay, that's one point. That's that's one very good point, isn't it? She invited her boyfriend without telling. That is an arsehole thing to do, and I sympathise with that. That's a fair point. Um, it's downright rude, because despite what she says, it will affect your experience too. You're now a third wheel instead of someone on a trip with a friend. Is it too late to back out? Not the arsehole. Third wheel. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I do think that that boyfriend without telling is it is rude. Not the asshole. You used to think, yeah. I don't think she's an asshole. I get, I get the frustration. I just think that basically trying to force two thirds of the payment onto them two is a bit. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let's have a little look. What else? Oh, is that? Oh, that is. Uh, oh, I don't know. let me. Who's this one? Not the asshole. Please do not help pay for your friend and her boyfriend to take a vacation. Back out if you can. I doubt you will enjoy yourself and you will resent that. I mean, that's a fair point, I suppose, isn't it? It's one thing I'm not thinking about, really, is... why? I mean, I mean, does she not like the boyfriend? Does she not know the boyfriend? We, why, why would she not enjoy herself? But I suppose it would be... It was. It, it was the, the purpose of the trip was just a two-friend bonding session, right? And it's not turned into what that was going to be, so... You will resent them for taking advantage of you. By the way, they are absolutely taking advantage of you. It is two people getting a trip for the price of one while you are subsidizing the third person. That's one thing that I, I, I don't agree with, though. How is it subsidizing the third person? That's I, I, that, that, that term I don't agree with. It's not subsidizing here. If she, if she pays 50% of the holiday, she gets one room. If she's paying, two, uh, paying a third of the holiday, she gets one room. She has that room for herself. That is her room. Nothing changes in that respect. So I don't understand why. You know. I just I don't understand that. Her holiday has changed, and that that's the one thing I do understand. Her holiday has changed, and yeah, oh, totally, be fuming completely. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah, like without 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 consent, without permission, without discussion first, you would be fuming. Um. The holiday has changed. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I just don't know. I just don't know if it's subsidized. I don't know. How will her boyfriend presence not change the holiday experience? It was supposed to be the two of you. Now you've got to split the attention and activities because boyfriend and girlfriend do different stuff together. Seems like a boyfriend and girlfriend want a cheap holiday after all and decides to take advantage of you for that goal. Back out and make them pay for the entire apartment if possible. If, see if they still want to go. Mm. A lot of people seem to have that sentiment, don't they? Maybe I'm just reading it differently. Maybe I'm just reading it differently. When three adults go on vacation, the costs should be split three ways. That's perfectly reasonable. You're sharing most of the space and the experience after all. It's seriously an asshole move to invite a tag along on a vacation. Yeah, it is. That is an asshole move. It is. I completely agree with that. Um, without talking to the other people going on the trip, it's the worst when a trip was originally planned for two friends and the one one adds their SO. Um, because it means significant other isn't it because it means that either 
it'll turn into a couple's trip or with one or the original travellers being a third wheel the whole trip and stay, it'll stay as a friend's trip with a grumpy left out so tagging along uh, I guess at best you might alternate who gets left out and I should have won in one of those rare situations where the group is already working as a trio but those are quite rare ain't paying 50-50 for it to be a third wheel yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I mean though if it was in advance on a gal pal holiday we planned um, yeah, no, I, I get that. No, I, I yeah, but and again, if it was talked, that I, I suppose I think I think if we're gonna break this down, like the the the, the triggering point, the the point, isn't it? The the, the biggest assholey moment of this whole thing is the fact that the other person brought their boyfriend with them without talking about it with the with the person first, right? That's the asshole moment of this whole scenario, and from that asshole moment, other things have then been discussed about. Um, so yeah, that's. I definitely think the the friend's an asshole. Um, for doing that for sure. Um, I don't think yeah. So overall, okay. So on that, this person is not the asshole. Uh, I do. I agree that they should be paying for a third of the trip. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I quite quite agree with that. But I get, I get, the, I get, this, I understand why other people are saying that. I understand that, especially when it comes to the holiday trip dynamic changing, because it has completely changed now, hasn't it? Um, there is, there, you know, you can say it all you want, uh, otherwise. But if you're going on a holiday with a friend and you're going on a holiday with a partner uh, or with kids or whatever, the, the, the dynamic changes. Like, okay, I think I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching this, I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give us a like. And maybe join us on Twitch once in a while. We tend to stream on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays around 8 or 9 p.m. BST, GMT, UK time, depending on the time of the year. Thanks for joining, take care and I'll hopefully see you soon.